Matthew Lee, Inner City Press. On behalf of the Free UN Coalition for Access, thanks a lot for doing this briefing. I wanted to ask you something about the UN itself, um, and it has to do with there's, a, there's been a controversy for about a year now about uh, interns at the UN not being, uh, uh, being unpaid interns, so that, that, that uh, youth from the developing world basically can't, and you have only people that could afford to live in New York and Geneva that can do it. I wanted to know if you think this should be addressed, will be addressed under this Secretary General or the next Secretary General. And I also want to ask you, Mr. Ryder, basically for the last more than a year, there's been no staff union here in New York. And I'm asking you, it might seem like a small thing, but your ILO, what do you think of labor relations in the UN itself? Is it credible that, 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 a, that a Secretariat can deal fairly on labor issues if, in fact, it doesn't recognize either of the two uh, competing unions that exist? Thank you. I hope you, you'll allow me to, to, to respond to your question sure. from my own perspective and Definitely. my own experience. Uh, the ILO, we have interns and we pay them. We have, uh, and, and not only do we pay them, but we take care to ensure that their experience is one which adds to their professional experience and capacities. We take seriously our responsibilities to train uh, and to develop uh, the people we, we bring on board. Uh, now, I, of course, am aware of the controversies uh, that have um, taken place elsewhere. I do think uh, internships, wherever they take place, be they in the UN, the public sector, or the private sector, do need to be uh, operations which genuinely uh, take account of and seek to advance the interests of the people who come to work. Uh, I hope you'll accept that as my best answer to, to, to the question. We are in the process at the ILO of putting in place a quality framework on internships because although we pay and although we take care of the way we treat our internees, I think constant improvement is a name of the game and we will be, be doing that. Uh, I enjoy a lively relationship with my own staff union. Uh, it is uh, a constructive engagement and keeps me on my toes. Uh, I'm very clear uh, that uh, uh, staff union representation of the people who work for me is a fundamentally important part of the, uh, the life of my organization, and it's a fundamentally uh, important part of the terms, conditions, and rights of the people who work for me. Uh, so I give those two answers from an ILO perspective, which is really all I can answer to. Thank you. Sylvia? Oh, sorry. Please yeah. Go ahead. sorry. Yeah, and I actually would like to add a lot on that because ISEC being a, the world's largest youth-led organization that focuses on sending students abroad to do internships, this is actually, you tackle a very important point of our operations. Uh, as I mentioned before, we run two types of internships, the ones that are professional in governments and companies, multinational startups, but also in NGOs, civil societies, etc. As young people, we do understand, acknowledge, and embrace the challenge that we have of we need working experience in order to have a good pay salary. But in order for us to have this experience, we need to have the opportunities. We are fully aware of that. And in that being, like, with that being said, we have come to realize that there are solutions in place. We do uh, st stood up for a position that is very clear that young people need to have a stipend to live. We cannot rely on our, on our parents that are already making huge investments into paying our education. But this can, this can be like the door to brainstorm about other solutions that we have, for example, in ISEC found that there are some other stipends that can be done in an in-kind way because we are also looking for that experience. For example, working in the UN is a unique opportunity for any professional around the world to, to ensure that the professional development is happening. But if it's not possible to have a stipend, like for example, as a salary, how can we find other ways of uh, surviving in a way of saying in this environment and still have the opportunity? So I think that finding the balance is something that we have already tackled. We have many examples on what works, what doesn't work, what young people is willing to do, and what people like what young people is not willing to do if there's no like a basic requirement. But I think that if you go to our website, you will find many, many examples of this. 